Well, good day again. Long time no post, I guess. Um, yeah, anyway, made an investment, a uh, VJ Valiant charger, and you know, started sorting it out. But what was found um, was that since it sat uh, since '87, I think I was told. I can't remember at the moment. Um, it is seized on the top end. Bottom end, fine, but the valves seized. So, this video is going to be about replacing my uh, push rods, sorting out my valves. So, yeah. Um, this is a 8 month 73 VJ charger. It's an early one, so it's got a four pin brake booster and three port so discs on front drums on rear had a three speed in it 265 um, three speed was replaced somebody put a four speed single rail forward gearbox in it um, the 265 bottom half of the block is actually missing uh, it's been replaced with the 245 there's no difference between 245 265 bottom half Top half is 265 from the original engine, um, including headers and fucking exhaust, intake manifold and exhaust manifolds. We've sorted out timing and everything, it's just it won't run. It fires, but it won't run because the valves, again, cease. So that's what we'll be sorting today. Got new push rods for it. Um, two of my rocker brackets are broken, so I've got to fix them because nobody wants to sell me theirs. But they have spare because. Well, they're original, blah, 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 which I understand, yeah. So I'm going to do it the budget way. Um, so yeah, so this will be a pretty long series restoring this car. So hope you guys find it helpful, whatever. Yeah. So this is it. Um, you guys are probably thinking, what the hell? This is a ultimate rust bucket. And I have been told that. I mean, yeah, there is holes everywhere. I mean everywhere dented in fender x race car 12 slotters on front 12 slotters on rear but they were removed um, there is not much left by the looks of it but that's just the front end the front end can be repaired I've got replacement fenders and everything for it, a replacement bonnet doors are hard to come by took my dash gauge cluster out but that's my interior got new bench seat for rear these will get reupholstered the gear stick very odd moving on to the rear end again fucking pretty bad um, but boot lid opens everything lights are all intact everything works as it should but it doesn't boots not too bad especially the lid bonnet really took a hitting but really got to fix the sills and sort those out but shouldn't be an issue um, so the plan is to get this running and driving by the end of uh, next year which I mean is possible if I do it all myself the side isn't too bad minus the quarter and the kick plate uh, the door not only is it dented in the fenders caused it to stop but this door has an issue Let's see if I can open it. Okay, I can't open it, but... Yeah. Um, somebody cut the frame out. I'm like, that side, but that side's really bad. They cut that off. There's no glass, nothing. I've got all the mechanism for it. But, you know, this is part of my master cylinder. It is a pretty hefty restoration, I reckon. Bottom half's actually not too bad. I've had a look. I'll put some photos in afterwards, but took my master cylinder off because I got a new one again early VJ four stud took the compliance plate off that's in my uh, room this is out of a Cortina apparently this is what I've been told and whoever put this in here did a really bad job because look at this um, so yeah but this isn't too bad the engines pretty good um, so yeah two barrel 265 but 
has some little modifications which are very odd. I mean, they were running without windscreen wipers. This was all horrible. I've got two ballast resistors in here at the moment. I'm waiting on my voltage regulator because that's all I'm missing at the moment. I need probably a new ammunition box, but I mean, it powers on, it runs. And this isn't actually too bad after I flushed it. The block's pretty clean. It's just I need to replace that thermostat, so <laughs> shouldn't be an issue. All that's correct. Minus the numbers, the numbers on there mostly have to do with the timing, which we've now set properly on there. Again, it does fire off, but since the valves aren't good, it won't work. There's, uh, the, you know, it's still got the body number and the VIN tag matches, so can get it re-regoed, hopefully afterwards. No power steering unit. Uh, this is a manual steering, manual transmission. So. This is going to be a lot of fun. Anyway, so we're going to um, take all this off. This air filter cover isn't the original. This is from a Datsun. The bottom is from this car. Um, I've got the top, which came with it. All original, remember. So this is someone's modifications from back in the day. Um, I mean, they had ideas, and those ideas were horrible two barrel carter carb works perfectly like it should um, it had an automatic choke or electronic as well but again disconnected because someone didn't like it i'm guessing now from memory it's, this is the socket no that's a small one Now, this is a trial and error thing. you got to like put your socket on and test it here. Oh, and I just dropped it. The 10 mil one, of course. Um, I'm not even joking, this is a 10 mil socket from fucking, what is it, 1970. So, just put these on. And hopefully, that's the right way. Yep. So I've taken this off before, and I will include some photos um, while I'm doing this of what uh, and why the reason. I probably explained it in the uh, start, but pretty much uh, what happened was is that it wasn't running, but it was firing on two cylinders, and me and the person who sold to me couldn't figure out what was going on so I pulled the cover off once they left and two of my push rods are broken and my valves are seized so that is why um, it doesn't want to run which is sad to be honest but it's an easy fix because I went and picked up some new push rods and extra stuff so Hopefully, I can get that to work fantastically. Just unclip that from there. Now, this is a very big car with a fucking large front end. Hard to deal with. I'm missing one of these bolts. I've only got 10. There's meant to be 11. Um, but these are bloody hefty cars. They go fast. These 265s are for the most powerful six-cylinder ever produced by Chrysler I think. I think in total it's the most powerful one ever made. I haven't done my research so don't get mad at me about that but I know it is a bloody powerful fucking car if they can give me my socket back. Oh Jesus Christ. I don't want to snap that even though I've got a spare I don't want to snap it because it's actually still good. My brake booster does work. Um, again this car has been through hell and back so don't suspect it to be perfect on the inside. I hate this one right at the back. It is a pain to get to because it's right against the firewall. I'm glad there's no extra shit on here. I mean, by all means, it could have had triple weathers and that would have just given me grief, but I'm so glad it didn't. Um, as much as I like triple webbers, I reckon having one of these carbs allows you to mod it and play around with it a lot more than you should be able to. Usually that just comes 
up. Oh, I forgot one. Because then I can pull out all these bolts one by one, easy as once I pull the cover off. There we go. Okay. I'm just going to put them in my little box. So I've got my box of push rods or container. As you can see, all brand new. Well, they were in an engine, but the engine was, never, it was one of those Chrysler display engines that they had in the um, thing, and somebody was parting it out. So, yeah, I got a box for the push rods from 318. This, I made, made sure these are for the six cylinder. So, I got 318 push rods, I got six cylinder ones, I got the um, time gear, time and chain from this. Um, so, you know, it's just lengthy thing. I'll uh, stop the video here and come back when I've got the cover off. Okay, so it should just come right off now. You can already hear it jingling on the inside. So, cover's off. You can see it's actually a bit bad. It smells like fuel and oil. The thing I hate about taking these cars off, like these uh, covers off, nobody's touched them for a certain amount of years is the um, fact that someone has used silicon to put the gasket on and the gasket is broken now so that's great anyway it doesn't really matter as long as I do it good enough but that's the matching number to the block the old block this one's a different one but you can see these are supposed to have a little bit of play like that and that but see seized up that one has play, that one's broken, that one's broken. See, those are broken off, so I'll get these off. And uh, have a look, they were getting oil. It was pressurizing. But you can see, some of these brackets, they were bending. So, um, they are having a, not a good time. So, they should move like that. But they aren't so it's telling me either my lift is stuck or something else is seized so once I get that off I'll know the problem okay so here we are I don't think that is the right size nope so pretty much the deal with this is I've got to get them all off yep that's perfect first try and once I do Hopefully these don't prang me in the face, but these should, like my rockers shouldn't be bad, it's just I'm worried about um, the condition of the inside of the block because that could determine that something has gone horribly wrong. I mean it was building oil pressure, the only things I'm worried about is how straight are my push rods. I mean, that one's pretty straight. So let me just shove that back down there and give that a push. Yep, that works. Valve works. So, that one doesn't have an issue. I'll leave that unbolted so I know that I've done it. I will replace all these push rods though, so no exceptions. And I've got to take these two brackets off. Um, mainly because I've got to... <coughs> that one's fucking on there tight. Um, because I've got to pull them off and sort them out. So I'm going to use what I learned from my, what is it, teacher, because I'm doing a mechanics apprenticeship, so I'm going to do what I learned from him. He taught me how to do it. He goes, with your, um, your valves, if they don't move, get a hammer, you lightly tap them. So that's what I'm going to do afterwards. These actually look pretty good. So hopefully it's not an issue down at the bottom end. Yep, that one's... Oh, that one's good. Uh-oh. How about that? That's seized a little bit, so... Sort that out in a minute. Put that back on. I've got the shop manual here. Torque spec. That should be okay. Valve stuck. Okay. That's fantastic, isn't it? I love having a valve stuck. The oil is, has been changed from 
people I bought it from. There's a lot of history from this car. Um, this car came all the way from Parramatta, Sydney. And um, it, it was, so it was built in 73 and sold in 74 and then in 75 it came over to Perth where it is now. And that one's seized, so could have got a new one. Sort that out. Um, I'll put the ones that are seized like that. But um, so it came to Perth, and it's been here ever since. It raced for a bit um, on some track. Uh, I think Ronaroo Raceway and all the local speedways that were around at the time. And it was racing till '87 apparently that I got from a guy um, but he said that um, that he hadn't seen it since 87 so it could be the time when it th uh, went out of um, track you know it didn't, didn't return to the track but this push rod is severely bent see look at that I don't know if you guys can see that camera but look at that so this definitely needs replacing. So I'm going to leave that on the angle like this. These ones actually aren't too bad, considering C they're C cylinders. So, but they will all be replaced. These rockets are still good, but I've got replacements. I'm not going to complain. I just pressed on my hose and there's air coming out of the radiator. Um, but yeah, so a little bit more insight into this car. Um, from from dealership, it came with the tow ball option and aircon option, but you know someone stole it. What can you do? Um, that's just how life is. How's that one looking? Pretty straight. I'll keep the ones that are straight as spares. The ones that aren't, I will not keep at all. Seized. Yep, all seized. So. Seized. The first two were actually brilliant. They weren't actually too bad. Yeah. If you can push on it with your hand by putting all your weight on it, then they're fine. But if you can't, then they're seized. So, give it a little tap with the hammer. She'll come loose. She'll be brand fucking new. So, these are seized. And it seems like it's the intake and exhaust manifold. On these two cylinders that seem to do it um, I don't know why but it did who knows that's just I guess a Chrysler thing um, yeah I already took this out because I got to repair it that these two push rods that are missing were snapped completely in half again I'll put a video a photo of it if you follow me on TikTok, you've probably seen it um, and again, it's not a pretty sight to see that this has happened with any person who owns one of these cars or any car. It's not a pretty sight to see. Now, I have a feeling that this is bent. Oh, it's got a little bit of a bend in it. I'll put it back. Give that a push. No, nothing. Okay. I'm going to pull all this off anyway. I'm just loosening it so I can just straight off after. This one I've got to take off as well. It's already missing it. Just got to make sure nothing goes in the block, you know what I mean? I like know shit. What stuff gets in your block? That's it, you're not having a happy day. So the ones that broke are definitely seized. I know that for a fact. The ones that didn't, I have no idea. But if I see the lifters push the push rods up, we're having a good day because that means I don't have to replace them. Even though I've got brand new replacements I'm not in the mood to remove my inspection cover and my distributor or anything just to fix them because it's too much of an effort to get your hands in there and then all of a sudden you can't actually uh, do it oh this really kills your back just trying to bend over over the front of it just to get to these the fact that people rebuilt this shit back in the day like this it's amazing you know, there we go. 
That one felt a bit weird to undo. Hopefully it's not it's threaded or anything. Nope. That one's coming up pretty nice. So yeah, but these are all got a bend to them. So I'll take these two brackets to school, weld them back together. So I don't have a MIG available to me. It's at the workshop at the moment. Um, once. So I'll probably end up just taking these to school, going in there, welding them back together, cleaning them up, come back, put them all back together. So this video will probably span about like a week of me just back and forth between school and home to differentiate between this. So now I've got all these undone. I'm going to stop, come back with a container so I can put all my stuff in so I remember where everything goes. Okay, and we're back. Um, got a little container just to chuck all my stuff in. I'll just put that down here. Just hope that doesn't fall off. So pretty much just take all my rockers off, chuck them in there, take my things off, and I'm gonna put the ones that aren't broken in there, the ones that are, um, take to school so I can fix them. So at the moment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all my cylinders. These are still all stamped with Chrysler and a UAP on them, all these rockers, so definitely original. Um, with these valves, they're a lot bigger than uh, actual normal 265, so I don't know, someone's gone and modded them for some reason. Um, yeah, kind of odd, but yeah, so it's got the, the 8th day of the 8th month 73. So this is from the original block, and because the car was produced, or finished manufacturing on the 8th day of the 8th month, 1973. So its birthday was at the start of this month, it's now the uh, 30th when I'm recording this. Um, well, I started recording today on the 30th, but yeah, so it's birthday, it turned 49, um, next year it turns 50, so very old car, but it's surviving. Look, watch, I'm going to post this video and go to school and you guys at school are going to be like, oh, he posted a video about his car, let's harass him, ah, ah, or whatever. I mean, I get the good group of you guys who go, oh wow, I didn't know you knew this much, la la la. Um, and then you get the other group of guys who are like, oh, he's working on this shitty car, why don't you buy something nice, like a fucking BL Calais or some shit. And it's like, I don't like that. But you know, oh, why don't you get a fucking GQ Patrol or something. No offense, no, but like, I like it Patrol, but I like muscle mail a lot more better than, um, and ni they're nicer in my opinion. Uh, you know, I, I, I get people coming up to me like, oh, why don't you just buy four wheel drive? Oh, why don't you buy like a Triton? La, la, la. It's like, well, no, I was brought up with this stuff. Um, street machine, seeing them at the drags and shit, and it's like, nah, man. Ain't no way. Like on the TV, I've watched like Graveyard Cars or some Rick's Restorations or something. And that. And whenever the cars came on, I'd be interested, you know? And for ages, I watched people work on these things, you know? Nonsense know-how, bloody Vice Grip Garage, all them guys. Bloody, that's how you learn, you watch them. Junkyard Digs, bloody, all those guys. You watch them, you learn things. If you don't watch them, you don't learn anything. Look at this oil, man. I mean, I'll probably tell you what's in it by just tasting it, so I probably will in a minute. But man, you know, you sit inside, you don't do anything, you don't learn anything. You've got to get out there, get your hands dirty. And, you know, sometimes you got to learn the hard way by getting electrocuted by your uh, coil 72 times in one day. Not joking, I counted. Sometimes that happens, sometimes it doesn't, so. These are actually still all right. Minus that one, that one. So 
now I've got all these off, I'm going to take these with me because I've got the other bits inside so I can fix them take all my push rods out and then I'll see which ones are worth keeping which ones aren't and then in the end I'll probably just have because I've got a bunch of these blocks I'll probably just put them in there and cut the side off of it because I've got one that if one of these is blown up but you can see there was oil getting into them the top they're dry bottom they're not if I were to blow into these oil would probably come straight out of it so I'm not going to do that I should have really grabbed another container let me have a look inside the car see if there's anything No, I don't. I don't really think that through, did I? Mm -hmm. no, I'll just put it in there. So, I'm going to grab a hammer and I'll show you what I was talking about. Okay, so, I grab my hammer and I'm just going to show you. So, he said, you grab any, you grab any hammer and you can just give it a little tap like that and if your hammer bounces back see like that so that's your intake so it's gonna make a sound exhaust won't intake will see see how it's changing sound just by tapping it you just yep whoop see see this one's sees right you give it a little tap and it comes free. Do this one. There you go. Same goes. See, not so well. You give it a little bit of a... See how much it springs back up and the spring does move. Where before, it wasn't. You do this one. See, sounds a bit dull. It's good. You do this one. Yeah. There you go. You just got to make sure the spring starts moving down with it. Once it does, you're having a good time. So same goes up the back. Just don't want to hit my hose because the hose is actually still good. Yep, that one's good. That one's good. That one's good. So all my valves should be unseized. We'll just do one more little little test. Yep. 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 Oh, that one's a bit hard to get to. No, that one's seized. A little bit of a tap. A look. Yep. 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 Okay. They're all good. So, now we put our new push rods in. And we put the old brackets back on and we leave the two cylinders that are broken out so it's cylinders three and four these two um so it's this one this one this one so these four here so we'll leave those out so yeah we'll get to that right now i'll just grab my new push rods i won't have the other bits till later but the other thing i want to check as well so don't do anything just put these down here now on my lifter, just give it a little press and see. Does it spring? Yes. It's a little push. If it comes back up, your lifters are good. And they are pumping oil as well, so... It means that there was oil still in it. Yep, still good. Still good. At some stage when I pull this out, I will replace the lifters and everything. I don't know what that is. I think my lifter has actually come out of there. Oh, look at that, it has to. So this is the only issue which I hate. Is when your lifter comes out. Because that shouldn't be making a sound like that. So, I have to take the inspection cover off. Unless I get that back in there. 
What about the other side? Does that go down? Yeah, kinda. Yeah, so... I was told as well it could be a lifter issue. So I'm starting to believe that it is. Um, so I will replace those as well. That one's still got it. I didn't really check that one properly. Still got it. Nope. Still got it. Still got it. Okay, so it's the lifters on cylinders three, I think. So we'll have a look real quick, just check one last time. Cylinder three. Cylinder four. So again, cylinders three and four, no bueno. The rest of them, brilliant. So it just allows me to put them back in and leave out cylinder three and four. Um, I will have to pull my inspection cover off at a later date because there is a few fittings which I'm not going to bother with. Miss out these two, those two, go to the next one. It's in the five. Yep, still got it. Beauty. Because yep. one, as long as they spring, you're having a good day. So I've got four left over. Those four go in there. I won't put them back on. They'll come back. And those stay in there. I'll put the old brackets on. Leave out that. Just put those on there. Uh, leave out three and four. Bam. And then I'll put the uh, rockers back on. Well, the ones that go on those cylinders. And it makes sense why. Cylinders three and four were so carbon fouled compared to all of those because these are all clean plugs or replaced performance plugs. Cylinders three and four, brand new and they turned black. These ones didn't. It was running on all cylinders. I didn't get a video, but you know, that's what happened. So when I put it back together, I'll um, put a video of it running, a separate video, hopefully it sounds good, so yeah. So I'm going to put all those back in that have uh, got the thing and then I'll come back. Okay, so they're back in, so now I'm just going to tighten them down, make sure they're all properly in and uh, don't have an issue. So I was also told, again, by my uh, mechanic the guy teaching me, he also said they need to have at least a little play. Um, you can't have them too tight. Too tight means you cause push rod bending. So you just almost try and get as much as it had when you put it on there. Because if you have too little play, you got to do, do both sides to the point where they're both starting to tension. But you gotta have play. So can have too much, that's too loose. Just do that seems about right. This side that's too much. See how what I mean? You gotta have a little play, you gotta back it off. You can't always have that and I mean turn the engine backwards it should relieve that cylinder and then you can tighten it too little
is on max torque by the looks of things. No one's too loose. That should be good. You've got to have that little bit of play. It allows you to lift and push those lifters down. So you wind them down a bit and then you get them lined up. Sometimes the uh, head of your bolt will be a bit fucking loose, but you try and line it up as best as you can. Give it a bit of a custom torque. And, uh, you just hope all goes well. Give it a press. Yep. Give it a press that way. Yep. That one seems a bit loose. Just give it a bit of a No, too tight. Okay. Shut up birds, you bloody stupid things. God, I hate them. Sometimes I wish I just shoot them with a pellet gun, but they're illegal here. So, no pellet guns for me. Again, so we're only doing these ones. I don't want to smash my carb, thank you. I'm putting my arm and hair in little rust from my bonnet. That will be replaced, but I will keep it. Because I am going to fix it. So that's about roughly the middle, just uh, not torque to spec at all, but it's got play unlike before. I don't know if my bonnet goes up any higher, nope, the whole skin comes off if I push it. Okay, um, again same goes here, you can't actually undo it because of the firewall. So you got to look like a fucking nut job, um, anyway. It's not tight enough yet, but there is a chunk of rust just chilling in there. When doing this, you don't want any rust just to land in your rockers, like, or paint. That is a... It's a killer. It really is a killer for these things. Or oh, I've got, like, solidified oil here. And with little flakes of, like, rust. So when doing this to an old car that's got heaps of rust around or near, this when you got the heads off and the uh, rock cover up. It's kind of threaded. Just gonna do it that tight. A bit more. Yep, that's good. <laughs> oh fuck, so much dirt and shit. So, yeah, this is going to be fun. I'm going to put the cover back on, the rocker cover, but I'm not going to bolt it back on because I'm going to come back to it tomorrow. Um, pretty much, it's just the fact that this isn't a thing that I can do in one day. It's more like a, uh, it'll take me about a week to do because I'm also waiting on a voltage regulator. So that it will start and run properly because it doesn't have one. Again, it got stolen. Mine didn't actually come with a ballast resistor. Got stolen, found one. So I had to do some custom wiring job before. Which I mean, allowed it to run, it just wasn't very good. It wasn't healthy, it wasn't running healthy, and that probably makes sense because it was running on fucking four of the six cylinders. Still standard good though. I checked all the cylinders, all cylinders have 200 psi worth of compression, so it's pretty cool. That one does not want to play, does it? That one is tight as f as fuck. That one I didn't do because I forgot. Makes sense, it's a usual me thing. I forget to do something and then I'll go wrong. So, I'm guessing the reason those don't move is because the valve is engaged. You just give it a bit of a turn. It should move now. 
brilliant. Hopefully my cam shop isn't damaged. Nope. Perfect. Works. So I'll uh, continue on tomorrow with doing some welding or something else to fix those brackets but I'm glad that I know that this is the way it should be so I'm just gonna go one final turn and twist on all of these Oop. just make sure they're on I'm not gonna overdo it with the rattle gun so just do it by hand this is how they would have done it anyway or they had air tools Bang! One more! Bang! Done that way. See? No harm done at all. Perfect. I'll uh, catch you guys then. When I uh, do some welding, the welding will be in the video, so... Yeah. Don't abuse me. Won't be the best, but all I can say is that at least I'm trying. <laughs>